Sports in Irvine, California on this gorgeous sunny day with Norman, who is going to give us an amazing tour of the facility, talk to us about all these special cars, and then stick around to the end because we have a very special announcement. So right off the bat when you walk inside here you can really see how overwhelming it is with the amount of cars that we have. We do Shelby Cobras, both the 289 and the 427 cars. We do Ford GT40s, we do a Mark I and a Mark II body style. We do Daytona Coupes, Corvette Grand Sports. This is true 60s heritage race cars. It is so fun to be around here, a lot of fun stuff. <laughs> you walk in and immediately you get so excited because there's so much to look at and so much to see and, and you're going to tell us all about it. But could you start off explaining a little bit the continuation cars and super performance because I think that's a little bit misunderstood yeah. um, in general. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. we build, what we do, super performance is a licensed manufacturer through Shelby American to build a licensed continuation vehicle is what it's called. So everything that we build is built to the original or designed off the original specification that Carroll built these cars to in the early 60s. Okay. So when we do a Cobra, we do two different versions of a Shelby Cobra. We do a Superformance Cobra, which is an example right behind you here. Okay. Um, what it does, it has its own custom square tube chassis. It has Bilstein suspension, Willwood power brakes, a lot of modern attributes to make it drive like a new, fast, comfortable sports car. Okay. Turn and stop as well as a sports car. <laughs> Um, but it's then a it's great also, to yeah, yeah, it's important <laughs> to turn and stop sometimes. And then the body itself is meant to look period correct in every way. The customer gets to choose the color that they want to do, different stripes, options, accessories, all that. So that's where it varies. But when it comes down to the dimensions, the specs, the layouts of everything, right. the Super Performance cars are built true to original. Okay. Whereas then the CSX car is built absolutely true to original, okay. all the way down to a round tube chassis frame. Um, manual Shelby racing brakes. So no heat dissipation, no sound deadening. That car rides like a brand new 1965. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So it, it is the uh, it is the real deal. It's stamped with a CSX chassis number through okay. Shelby American. Okay. That's what goes into the registry of ownership. Um, or I should say the vehicle is, re is eligible for the registry of ownership if the customer decides to do so. Okay. Um, and it comes with an original MSO, a manufacturer statement of origin through Shelby American. So. Yeah, so very different from a kit car or things like that, yeah, obviously, we, like these no, are original. Exactly, yeah. no kit car stuff around here. <laughs> we do, uh, when we build a new car, I can show you here, we build a complete rolling chassis, front to back, brand new, paint's done, interiors in, dashboard, wires, radiator, everything's there. Customer gets to choose the power plant and transmission that they want to go with. Okay. So that's where it all varies. And if we take a look at this rolling chassis here, this car is brand new. Oh, wow, yeah. And you can see this is exactly how they come out of the factory. Okay. When they come to us uh, right out of, the, out of the container. You can see a radiator's installed. There's brake lines that are already run, hoses, electrical components. It truly is choosing the power plant that you want, going that route, having it installed and completed. Almost, almost plug and play. You know, as, as, close, as close as we can make it so that it's quick and easy to get it finished up. Wow, now, that's a beautiful car. A customer can choose a whole bunch of different options when it comes to a platform for a Cobra. They can choose a 351 Windsor variant, small block Ford variant. They can okay. choose a modular engine, more modern. They could go Coyote. We've done 7.3 Godzilla engines in them. Oh We've got um, a dealer of ours that you had the pleasure of meeting that had a 5.2 Predator supercharged GT500 motor in his. <laughs> um, and then we even have the wild and crazy all the way up to a V12 Ferrari. So wow. it, it really varies on what you can do and the sky is kind of the limit when it comes to it. Yeah. <laughs> Another happy customer. That's Another awesome. happy customer. You know, it's really fun being around here because we get a lot of people that come in to get their cars and they pull out of here in beautiful Southern California weather every day. Nothing is better than seeing a customer happy rolling out of here I in their bet. new car. Yeah, it is, yeah. It's so it's fun. Nirvana. Oh it, my pretty gosh. much. It's a, it's a feeling unlike a lot. You can get into a new Toyota Camry or BMW and pull off the lot and who cares. You pull out of here in one of those, this guy's going to roast the tires pulling out of here and smile ear to ear. So. <laughs> That's awesome. So as we work on down the line, um, we have a lot of Cobras. Superformance, uh, we build, I got to double check on the exact number of Cobras a month. Okay. But we build more of what's called the Mark III Superformance Cobra than okay. anything. Mm -hmm. Why is that, Norman? Like, is it uh, just appeal, customer appeal? or what? Yeah, why? yeah it's a, definitely a higher demanded product. 
carries more appeal to a lot of customers. There's a high demand for the Cobras. Okay. Um, they're definitely the pinnacle of what Carroll Shelby was, was all the Cobras they built out of the hangar. Okay. Um, obviously the GT40s have a lot of history to them. That's really got the name, but the Cobras are bread and butter. Um, we pump a lot of these out. Customers love them. They're so fun to drive. And um, that's kind of why we build more than anything. As sure. with that, the specialty cars, the GT40s, Daytona Coupes, Corvettes, yeah. they're a really labor intensive vehicle to build, so they take longer to build. Okay. They also carry a higher price point. So, uh, you know, yeah. we allocate a lot of the Cobras over the specialty sure. cars right now. Um, yeah. As it sits, we build about 350, give or take-ish, cars a year. Okay. Um, of all the different models, it's in the double digits of Cobras a month. So we have a lot of slots available for those, whereas the GT40s um, are about a year out. Okay. As it sits right now, the Daytona Coupes and the Corvette Grand Sports are almost two years out. Wow. So, okay. Yeah, we, we only build single digits of those cars a year, so, of the ah, Daytona Coupe it. and the Corvette Grand Sport. So when we get a lot of orders, backlogs pretty quick, as you could probably imagine. So <laughs> we'll keep on working down the line. And again, the beauty of uh, building a complete rolling chassis minus engine and transmission, the power plants all vary on the stuff that's completed um, and pre-owned that you see on the market. Okay. So every car is essentially unique to its own, which is really wow. fun and cool. Yeah, that's very cool. No two customers really aim to have the same car, which makes it really fun. We don't install the engine and transmission here in our facility. That's not part of our business plan. Sure. It's a separate process through, again, a different company. Okay. But we work closely with them to really guide the customer through the entire process. Nice, yeah. It's a fun part. We all kind of work as a team here to make sure everybody's happy. Yeah, yeah, seamless. That's awesome. So this yeah. is a beautiful Mark III Cobra oh, that has wow. a Roush 427 small block in it. Okay. So what that means is this is a 351 Windsor small block that's bored and stroked up to a 427 cubic inch V8. They make about, in this orientation with a carburetor set up, about 515, 525-ish out of the crate. Okay. Um, the cars weigh around 2,400 pounds. So anything over 400, 450 is wow. really enough to, yeah, to give you a smile going. and scare yeah. anybody. <laughs> this car is fitted with a Tremec five-speed. That's majority of the vehicles you'll see have a five-speed. Um, just to have overdrive okay. is amazing because yeah. you can cruise at 65, 70 without holding it really high in the RPMs. It's really comfortable. Sure. And God forbid you have a, a, a passenger in the car and your, your beautiful big side pipes are screaming. It's kind of kind of hard to have a conversation sometimes when you're on the pipe. So sure, sure. No, they're fun. And that, again, that seems like a good problem to have. Though, yeah, I'll you be know, you, you, you can't not smile with side pipes. I will yeah. say that it, it's hard to have a bad time with side pipes. So. Um, again, the, the cars weigh 2,400 ish pounds. Um, I guess depending on what you eat for breakfast before the driver jumps in. <laughs> and uh, they're so fun. They're rocket ships. But again, pulling back to what I said earlier with the suspension, chassis upgrades, and braking components. Yeah, yeah. They're so safe. They're so fun. They're so enjoyable to drive. Um, the CSX cars are a blast. They're so true to original, but they drive like a new 65 car. That's the wow. thing. Whereas these cars, they really do ride like modern sports cars yeah. with the period correct look, a lot of performance up front, and they're unlike anything on the road. I oh mean that. Gosh. I mean that. They're super, super fun. So. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I'll take two of these. There we go. Two of them. <laughs> and then uh, as we work down the, the path here, this is a CSX version of the Shelby Cobra. So if you look down in here, you can see there's a round tube chassis frame as opposed to a square tube chassis frame in the Superformance cars. So completely true to the original spec and design of the cars. Uh, majority of the CSX cars will get outfitted with an FE big block. So this one's running a Ford 427 FE uh, big block V8, just like they did back in the day. And you can either pair it with a Ford top loader four speed, which would have been a little more true to original, but majority of customers still kind of go for that Tremec five speed because again, having overdrive in these cars just to be able to it's cruise nice. around is nice. Yeah, so, so this big block, how, many, how much horsepower is that gonna give us? The big block as that sits is again, probably around 550-ish okay. horsepower, mid okay. fives, but the thing is, is it's right up there with the torque as well. Sure. So the big okay. block cars really have a lot of punch to them when you get after it, but again, something to consider um, the big blocks are a little heavier. Okay. They can be anywhere from 100 to 150 pounds heavier, depending on what you go with. Okay. Uh, 
compared to a small block variation. So a 427 small block makes just about the same power right now okay. that, that a 427 sold. big block can make. So yeah. give and take, you know, period, correct look, over weight and performance, all that stuff. So. Yeah. And again, that, totally customizable. Absolutely. So the customer can pick what they enjoy. Well, that's and, the beauty of it. There's no, yeah. there's no uh, opinion that matters except for the customers. If they want to go FE, they go FE. If they want to go small block, they go small block, and everything in between. Hell, if they want to put a V12 Ferrari in there, they can. <laughs> and you guys, you guys saw that one. So yeah, that's, that's true. it. We you know, check out that video. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Ted Terramina's V12 Cobrari, <laughs> coolest thing on the planet, man. Give that guy a lot of credit. Um, so yeah. That's the deal with the Cobras. These are all 427 cars. So these were the big side piped SC cars, which stood for semi-competition. Um, again, roll bar, side pipe, hood scoops, stripes, all that jazz. Let's jump into what's in the background here. I know everybody probably wants to see this beautiful <laughs> powder blue with orange stripe. Yeah, you know, I'd be lying if I didn't include myself in that yeah. because I've been really excited to talk about this car for multiple reasons. Um, yeah, you know what? <laughs> we're I think, a fan. We're I, a fan. I think we may have to save it then for the end of the dem uh, the walkthrough of all the cars. Let's let's tease them a little bit. Let's come back to this one. Let's go look at the Daytona, the Corvette. Um, and we'll we'll touch on those pretty quick and then we'll come back to what you know we're really here for so again we build a shelby daytona coupe it's the same setup as the csx cars with the cobras that i was talking okay. about so it's yeah. a licensed continuation built through shelby american built to the original blueprint and spec of the cars in the 60s um they're stamped with a csx 9000 series chassis number okay we also build a super super special uh edition of the car that comes with a limited production 2000 series yeah. chassis number remind us again you said originally they only b built very few of these cars so right. they, I mean, they're a couple, very special a couple thousand if that yeah, went back yeah. in the day so the continuations um i don't know exactly what number it started at i think it was late threes to fours okay, four thousands yeah. that is yeah. um is where the continuation started and uh we built 4,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, and now a limited 10,000 10, series okay. CSX cars. So we do a whole bunch here. <laughs> we definitely have our hands tied, but I wouldn't want it any other way. So I'll close this up here so we can see it. But wow, what this a is a car. CSX 9000 series yeah. Shelby Daytona Coupe. Um, this one's a little special, and if you saw a little teaser of it under the hood, <laughs> I'll, I'll show you why in a minute. But again, customer has the full discretion of specking out the car how they want. That's why this car itself is in indigo or a darker blue color with the Wimbledon white stripes. Okay. Um, custom numbers and roundels on the side. You can see you went with polished 18 inch wheels, which is an option as opposed to the 15s. So it all varies on what the customer wants to do with everything we do, which is why it's always so fun. nice. Yeah, um, very well done. It's, yeah. Gosh, it's beautiful. It, they're one of the coolest looking and designed cars ever. Mm -hmm. um, throughout history. They're so timeless. Peter Brock did an amazing design and job with Carroll Shelby back in the day. Um, originally only built six of these cars to race in as new rules were conforming throughout the organizations that they raced in. So it, that's where the whole spawn of the Daytona Coupe came from. Um, again, originally only six. You guys yeah. had the pleasure of seeing the one real one at your right. right? Yeah. And, um, I believe one was destroyed somewhere throughout time, so there's only five left, five. and uh, they're pretty cool. They're pretty cool. I was telling you earlier, if you found one of those go across an auction block, I would love to see what that goes for, because <laughs> yeah. I would have to guess, I'd have to guess north of $25 million for, a, for an original Daytona Jeez. Coupe, and nobody attacked me in the comments. I don't know, but I'm just guessing. <laughs> That's it. So. Um, but yeah, I mean, these cars are- Or if you know and you have one, you want to sell Norman one? Yes, he is please. Interested. If yes. you guys have an original Daytona <laughs> Coupe you'd like to sell, let us know. Um, so I'm going to have you pull up on that when I go around the side okay. here and show you a little bit as to why this car is pretty special. This customer wanted to build a pretty built to purpose car. Okay. Um, by that, I mean a fully aluminum oh, wow. Coyote platform built by MMR uh, with twin turbo setup making a whole lot of horsepower. <laughs> Full custom install by V's Performance here in, in Southern California. Um, took them quite a while, and this car is quick. This car is really quick. On race fuel, it made around, I believe, 1,300 horsepower, and then on pump gas, it makes north of 700. So Jeez. paired with a sequential shifter, this car 
is the real deal. It is not for the faint of heart. And uh, did it, he intend to race it, or what? The thought behind it, or was it just for you know? To yeah, enjoy? The, the the car was purpose built to be a drag car. Okay. Um, the customer wanted a pretty unique and bad to the bone drag <laughs> yeah, car per se, and. Yeah. Uh, they did an amazing job. It was so fast that it's right back here in our showroom for sale because I don't think it's even feasible to drive this thing anywhere <laughs> except the track, but it does turn heads. I will show you that. We'll see if we can get a clip a little later of uh, somebody firing it up and showing you what the two-step oh sounds gosh, like because it, wow. is, it is deafening, but it is cool as it spits three-foot flames out of the turbos. <laughs> So anyways, that is a example of a Daytona coupe. Wow. Most of the ones that we build though have essentially the same setup, a Roush 427. Okay. Uh, maybe with eight stack fuel injection. And this car can actually utilize a Tremec six speed really well. Okay. You can actually cruise this car pretty nice. And they come standard with air conditioning, power steering, power brakes power windows and power door locks. Wow, geez, a lot of little, modern upgrades, hey, this right? This is built true to original, but we got a little creature comfort in there so you can enjoy. So same thing here, this is a 1963 Corvette Grand Sport. Uh, we built this car under license of GM. Okay. It took a little bit of time for our owner to really fight against them to get the rights to do that. And now that we've had them forever, um, this is one of the coolest cars that we built. Yeah. I began to tell you a little earlier the story of it. Um, the coolest part of this car and why I love it so much is because I really don't think anybody knows what it is. I was going to say, these are very unique. Yeah. And when yeah. we first walked in, you, your eye just is drawn to it. Right. But it's like, what is it? Yeah. You know? So again, true diehard Corvette guys, GM people, etc. They all know what this car is. They may know what the car is. but. Um, a lot of people think that we take a, a, a C2 Corvette and we chop it up, we put wide fenders on it, we cut out the hood, um, fenders here, brake vent, you know, they think that we turn this into some off-branded race car. Right. We, we don't. We build this car exactly how Zora Duntaw built this car in the 60s through, through GM. And the whole quick story behind that. I was going to say, yeah, please share that yeah, story. Yeah. It's so great. So to my knowledge, again, if there's an aficionado <laughs> in the comments, you know, don't come at the throat here. But um, in the early 60s, GM employed Zora Duntov to build a uh, Corvette Lightweight that was going to attack Carroll Shelby on the track. They wanted to really be um, competitive on the track because he was dominating in the, in the Cobras and all yeah. that stuff. So what Zora did is he took a C2 VET platform and he built this essentially. Um, this may have not been an original color combo, but again, shape and body wise. It was a 63. He took out the rear window, the split window in the 63 coupes. Okay. Everybody loves those cars, but you can't see out of them. So you need a little bit <laughs> bigger of a window practical. when you're yeah. racing. Um, he had the cutouts in the hood there for aerodynamics. There was a lot of positive pressure in that engine compartment. So it needed to, to vent while you were going fast. It had the wide body uh, on the fenders, the big brake coolers, uh, the differential cooler in the back there. So all these cutouts in the rear, if you oh, yeah. if you look down here on the fender, you can see this whole back fender is cut out. Yeah, um, yeah. It's super cool. Again, all of it was because instead of aerodynamics, why don't we just cut a bunch of holes and let the air pass right through the car? So they do that. Um, and then the coolest part about it all was at the time nobody knew, uh, but Zora built the car at 7 8 scale off the original Corvette itself. So everything about these cars uh, was smaller. The hood, the doors, none of it would line up on an actual C2 63 Corvette. Oh my gosh. So we originally built five cars. Um, after racing on the track for a little bit and performing pretty well, uh, GM decided to cut the program. They ordered Zora to crush the cars, get rid of them, let's move on from it, we never did it, yada yada. Um, he snuck all the cars out. He gave them away to people and said, take these, I'm not getting rid of these cars, yada, right. yada. Gosh, what a waste. Right? Yeah. So then years go by, all this stuff, and then it emerges that the cars were actually still out there. Um, again, the coolest part about being licensed through GM to build this car, it's designed and engineered around the original blueprints. So this car itself is built at 7 8 scale. It wow. is um, 
It is the coolest car to drive. It is so cool. They're okay. so fun. These cars weigh again 23, 2400 ish pounds, and you can throw 18 inch wheels, 15 inch wheels. They also come with air conditioning, power steering, power oh brakes, windows, doors, the whole nine yards. Um, they are super, super, super cool. And again, I'm, I'm a tall guy. The GT40s are pretty tight for me, but out of the coupe cars, the Daytona Coupe and the Corvette Grand Sport actually offer a, a lot of room. Okay. I'm 6'4". I yeah. can fit into it with a little bit of headroom. So. Another reason to get one, right? Another reason to get Gosh, one. Gosh, those are sweet. Another reason to get one. And to just show you, again, all the power plants vary. This one's pretty cool. This has a built-up uh, aluminum Chevy small block. Go ahead and lift that strap for me. I believe it's a 354 cubic inch uh, aluminum small block punched out. It makes mid 500 horsepower. This is a snappy little motor in a, in a really light and nimble car. Again, you can see the AC power steering setup. You could really drive this car every day and probably not complain. You know, wow, so. I love it. They're super, super fun. And I love the, the straps and you were explaining to us the yeah. purpose of these and why they are a little bit loose and not really tight. Yeah, so the, the straps actually offer a little bit of slack. So when you're cruising and you're going really fast, the hood itself will lift up to allow some more air to come out of the, out of the engine bay. So okay. it's purpose built. It does look original and classic, obviously yes, having a leather piece on there, but it's functional. It's not just for looks. So super, super cool car. Um, I love the Grand Sports. You really don't see a lot of them. We've done them with 350 small blocks with the period correct 377 aluminum small block with side draft Webers. Okay. We've done them with supercharged LS platforms, LT4s, <laughs> everything you could think of. Enough to burn the tires and scare the absolute mess out of you. That's all I can say. So. How fun. Well, th yeah, this is really special. Again, you know, not very common. And yeah, yeah, exactly. Appreciate that's, you that's, yeah, that's the cool part. They're not common. Yeah. And everybody thinks that we butcher a Corvette. That's why I love them. <laughs> um, all right. I think we did everything. Now we can kind of dig into why we're here. We can talk about the coolest cars that we build, in my opinion. Okay. So this is built under license of Saffir Spares. You guys had the pleasure of meeting John Sadler at a Saffir. Um, and he explained to you the whole setup and the process. Again, this is not a kit car. This car is built true to original and it is a real GT40, wow. which is which is the coolest thing you can yeah. say. Yeah. It, it, John keeps track of all the cars from what you already tell you, late 60s, all mm -hmm. the way up until now. So yeah. he knows every single person's car. This is uh, one of my coworkers' cars. This is a Carroll Shelby edition Mark II GT40. So it's a 1966 body style, which was the original car that defeated Ferrari at the 24 hour Le Mans. So if you saw the Ford vs. Ferrari movie, that right. was the whole premise of that movie was actually was, right behind you there, there we you go. Some. Exactly. <laughs> that was the, the whole premise of that movie um, was the story of them defeating Ferrari at the twenty four hour Le Mans. And uh, this was one of the liveries of the car that did it. This was driven by the McLaren Amon team. The livery was I should say. Uh, however, we do a Mark II, again, which is the 1966, and then we do a Mark I, which is the 1968 and 69. Same setup, complete rolling chassis when brand new. Customer can choose options, orientation of the driving position. Um, they can choose the motor they want to go with. Okay. Colors, liveries, this, that, the next thing. Really make it your own. Again, and the cars come with air conditioning, so it's, <laughs> a, it's a race car, but at least the sweat won't drip into your eyes. It'll keep it on your forehead is what we what we always say. Well, and I heard that these cars are built so aerodynamically that they, really, even if you try to open that little window, you're not gonna get any yeah. you know, breeze or airflow. So, not much. I'd yeah. be lying if I said you would. There's a little pop out here. That's an option in some of them. And okay. it's, you know, it's just a, a straight bit. scoop. It may give you a little bit, but you're really gonna want that AC if you're stuck down in like some Florida heat and humidity or red light, <laughs> I'll tell you that. So um, at least being in, Southern California here, the weather's pretty nice all the time. It's so. pretty nice, I do agree, yes. The, uh, these cars are built, again, true to original with some modern chassis and suspension component upgrades. Um, over two thirds of the parts on these cars are interchangeable with the real deal cars wow. from back in the day. So these are everything we build 
are the closest renditions of the vehicles you can purchase without really having to dig out the deep checkbook, if you want to call it that. <laughs> so. Um, and you can even get the original right-hand drive yeah, if you would like. Exactly. Yeah, so this car's set up left-hand drive center shift. Uh, you can do right-hand drive center shift or brrr, what we'll unveil here shortly. Uh, you could do right-hand drive with a sill shifter. So even though you're on the right-hand side of the car, okay. you're still shifting with your normal brain pattern with your right hand right. for us U.S. Or, North America <laughs> folks over here. Um, now, again, we do a Mark II and a Mark I biggest differences right off the bat uh, are the rear clams on the Mark II's are a lot more aggressive is how I describe them. Okay. They've got double the fins, double the intakes, there's dual snorkels here that go down into the engine compartment as well as another um, air intake and scoop as opposed to on the Mark I which we'll go check out here shortly. There's no dual snorkel, it's a little, it's a little rounded, uh, more rounded I should say and finished off more. So a lot of people tend to go to the Mark I because um, they like the kind of the finished look of it. They think it has better lines and curves. Okay. Um, whereas the Mark II kind of has the reputation of being the race car looking one. Yeah. Believe me, they both look like race cars. I was going to yeah. say, they're both beautiful. Yeah. So. Yeah, this is gorgeous. And again, that 40 inch height. So you got to. Yep. Yeah, you got to yeah. duck a little again into it, but it's so worth it. GT40 comes from the fact that it is 40 inches off the ground. A little more with the gurney bubble on here, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> and um, they're super cool. Again, I'm 6'4". I can fit in these cars. The pedals are adjustable, so they will slide on a track okay. um, to accommodate four shorter or taller drivers as okay. needed. So it's possible to fit if you're a taller guy. Uh, you can also, or person I should say, and you should, you can take the foam insert out of the seat to fit even more. We, Okay. We've had customers up to six, seven that drive these things. Oh my gosh. So again, anything is possible. Don't don't feel like you can't because you're a tall person. <laughs> I've had to shell my entire life to sports cars because I can't fit in 90% of them. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, if I can make it work, I'll make it work. These are worth it. I was say, good news for me. I think I fit just fine. I, like no I think problem. You, yeah, I think you guys. Built for this. You guys fit pretty nice. <laughs> it, it, it works out well. Um, if you notice, every car that we build has true pin drive knockoff wheels. Um, okay. There's no fake stuff on any of the cars that we build. Everything is the real deal and they're just amazing products. treat i mean yeah. you just don't see these hardly at all i mean yeah. we're lucky enough to run into you and see you at special events in which you do have these you know yeah. but um but otherwise yeah very special i think what everybody wants to see is what you guys are gonna unveil in this video here <laughs> so we're gonna sneak back across the showroom here yeah um, I'm going to show you an example of a Mark One GT40, which again is is replicating the '68 and '69 body style of the race cars. The '68, '69 Le Mans uh, Mark One Golf livery race car 
was the first to do what it did because it won two years in a row in 1968 and 69. Yeah. Yeah. P1075 was the chassis number of that car. Um, first one to do it two times in a row. The same car win two times in a, in a row. Just like the Mark IIs, they're built to the original spec. Uh, a couple differences, you can see the scoop is different. So there's one down here for the engine bay okay. as opposed to that big one here that was on the Mark yeah, II. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a little more subtle of an air intake as well as a rounded more, and a little sleeker in the, little the sleeker rear end. tail yeah, um, I agree. as opposed to again the square ish as they describe it the flatter looking tail yeah. um, as with that there's no dual snorkels right here yeah like on the mark twos and there's also no intake this is just a, a heat plate for all the air to escape the engine bay um, this car embodies a couple options off of what we call the tool room car like yeah, i was explaining I was gonna, to you yeah, guys i was gonna say tell us about that yeah option. so you can do a mark one in its basic form you can choose red white blue silver gray whatever color you want <laughs> and you can set it up how you want um, or you can do a golf a true anniversary car which okay. comes with a special um gt40 1000 series chassis number as a 2000 as opposed to a 2000, 2000. series chassis okay. number um or you can do a tool room car. A tool room car is like true to every spec race car. No air okay. conditioning, um, different door latches, different cutouts in the body, extra wide body tail um, as opposed to the normal wide body option. Okay. The lights on the number, right? Light, Cause yep. the, in Le Mans, they needed, since they had 24 hours, they need the lights. Exactly, to... so the, the lights here, the round of lights is what they're called. Okay. When you turn them on, the the round shape there is called a roundel and then the numbers inside of it you're exactly right at nighttime they needed to see the numbers on the cars when they were racing and it has these different latches as opposed to the push handles like i showed you on the mark yeah, ii yeah 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 when you open this up again this car is built to replicate p1075 almost to an exact t it's got the right hand drive setup with the sill shifter on the far side of you there um, gauges are all laid out correctly there's a couple extra switches, again, air conditioning. If you come over to this side of the car, you can actually see that this car was signed by the driver of this car, uh, of P1075, I should say, Mr. Jackie A, who, wow. drove, who drove P1075 to victory uh, in those years. So, very, very cool car. Um, this is a really special one, so special that it just sold at Bear Jackson uh, in Scottsdale the other week and customer got an absolute absolute steal of a deal this is a beautiful car and about how many well it depends on the motor well tell us about the motor in this particular car yeah. and the horsepower and again very lightweight performance sports car so yeah, like yeah absolutely 2, pounds so go over here you see this pin there's a there's a push tab down there sure you yeah. just push that in it'll pop and drop as i like to call it there you go okay and then come up we'll grab this intake on the side together and just lift straight up wow. you're good i got this one you got it yeah. okay it's going to go back more. we don't want it to wow beautiful okay so this has a green west lake so this car um has true weber carburetor, uh, carburetors period correct look everything they're the coolest in the world they can be finicky to adjust don't get me wrong but there's nothing that looks like them they are so cool and you can see the 180 degree headers in this bundle of snake exhaust set up here all custom made um, five-speed transaxle these cars are built so beautifully so original um, this motor itself is a Ford racing motor. Okay. Um, I believe it's a 363 or a 364 engine. So it's a 302 platform that's bored and stroked up to either a 363 or 364. Makes 507 horsepower. And again, the car weighs 2,400-ish pounds. Okay. So, so you're getting <laughs> plenty of... Plenty of power. Um, they scream. They really rev up high. Um, and they just sound unlike anything as john explained to you in a typical setup in a cobra the firing order is all wacky it's like one one two two one two you know what i mean yes, it's, it's yes. just all over yeah, the place was... whatever a typical v8 firing order is with the headers the 180 degree header and the firing order set up on these cars it's boom 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 and it sounds oh, un 
godly. Oh it is just gosh. screaming the entire time. It is the coolest, <laughs> coolest sound in the and world. And there is nothing between you and that. No, you know, I just love it. Yeah. Ev every car we build, and some may take this as a little bit of scary knowledge, but it's the truth. There's nothing to save you in these cars. Okay. There's no ABS. There's no. Yes. There's no traction control. There's nothing that's going to yell at you on the dashboard if your tires are spinning. These cars are the real deal. And honestly, that's why they're so fun because we're not yeah. trying to make a modern modern car per se that's gonna save you. Sure. These cars are built original spec, so. Um, well, and I think drivers are really desiring that. You yeah. know, everything's become so automatic, even in these really high-end sports yeah. cars, that you don't necessarily feel it in your soul right. because, uh, you know, you get no power steering, no power brakes. So it's all manual. Right. So you're, you're living the experience, it's, which I think is just so I think so you hit exciting. the nail on the head there. Everything now you can get into is, believe me, there are performance vehicles out there. You guys can have fun in anything that's on the road, but it is nothing like these cars. Yeah. Nothing like the original cars. Um, I mean, any supercar, any Lamborghini, any Ferrari, any of that, any, yeah. even the electric hypercars and stuff that have undeniably amazing performance. Sure, you sure, know, yeah. Don't get me wrong, yeah. Rymac Nevera doing zero to 60 in 1.8 seconds is <laughs> ungodly, don't get me wrong, but. Yeah, we are gonna downplay that, but This yeah. is, truly unlike anything on the road. The Cobras are a fun drive. The, um, the Daytonas, the Corvettes, all that stuff are super awesome cars. None of them compare to the driving experience offered through a real GT40. Wow. That's wow. all I can say. Yeah, yeah. Well, you started it up a, a bit ago, and that was so exciting. I mean, it, you truly, like, just even hearing it, yeah. you get this huge smile. I mean, it's just, it's just different. It's, it's an overwhelming so cool. feeling, you know, again, even if you're not a super car nut, um, if you don't bleed oil per se, whatever you want to call it, and, yeah, yeah. and, and need grease in your, in your <laughs> hinges, um, hearing one of these run yeah. is still enough to just make you look and say, wow, that is cool. Yeah, and that, that's, that is something. that's just the truth of it. So, um, I mean, we'll fire it up, I'm sure, for the video here in a little bit, but they're... Uh, they're unlike anything. You want to show them the proper way of getting in here? Oh, sure. So go ahead and Gotta show them how the the, uh, the wheel is removable. So you reach in, you pull the uh, side pins there like that. They'll pull out. There you go. And now, easiest way to get into these cars and it's okay to do. You okay. can step on the seat okay. with both feet okay. and then just slide yourself down in. Okay. Keep, keep your legs straight the whole time until you smack the pedals. Yeah, I, I have a size advantage. There you go, these. it works out. Okay, this is so cool. This is awesome. Wow, oh my gosh. <laughs> This is awesome. I love how you sit in these. Yeah. You know, because you truly, you're almost on the ground, but it's just, it has a great visual feel. Just it's, the door this, open. Is, this is awesome. Yeah, they're, um, they're really unlike a lot, like I keep saying. And when you're sitting in these cars, you're on the ground of them. There, there really is no in between besides yeah. this foam. Okay. You're sitting in a pressed steel monocoque, so okay. if you if you remove the foam, you oh, can see sure. okay. you're, you're sitting in the pressed steel chassis here. And again, these cars are built so true to original that the um, the monocoque here is a pressed steel monocoque into the chassis, so it's all one unit. And then it's got fiberglass doors and a front and rear clam, so it's uh, it's exactly like they were back in the day but you just you can't describe the feeling it's truly unique to any car i've ever sat in yeah from just the whole experience of getting into it how you sit the design of it it's very comfortable yeah. you know and you just feel you just feel like you want to go really fast <laughs> so yeah, it is it's, and it's not even on <laughs> it's it's amazing because um you sit in the car you or well i should say you look at the car and you think it's going to be uncomfortable. You think it's going to be yeah. really raw boned, um, nothing to it for comfort. But again, you just said it without me even having to bring it up. It is a comfortable car to sit into. It we is. can conform the foam around different size and shape drivers okay. um, so that you're really 
perfect and ergonomical or you know it is ergonomical for you sure the driver um and they're they're comfortable cars once you get used to the pedal setup and the, the shift pattern and how they turn and drive and this and that you're gonna be really happy <laughs> in the car so i'm kind of alluding to something here and i'll, I'll let you guys kind of dig into it as we continue on here okay. turn the key the fuel pump will go your start button's up on the dash there so go ahead and push that button. Okay, keeping my feet on the pedals yep. like they are. Just a little tap. There you go. Oh my god. Wow. That's so cool. <laughs> this is so awesome. It is. It's so fun. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't stop saying fun. They're just, they're amazing cars. Wow. Sitting in it, it's crazy, isn't it? It's, it's it, just, it, it is because it's just your whole body. Is, yeah. yeah, it's so cool. It's a beautiful rumble. You know, it's, it's, a, just, it's an amazing rumble to yeah, say the least. Yeah, oh, this is so cool. I am so happy. This is so amazing. <laughs> That's so fun. Oh my gosh, that is awesome. Can I get a job here? Because I really just want to sit and play with these cars. There all you day. go. There you go. <laughs> Should we tell a little our story of how we met Norman and how this all came about? I mean, this is so, so fun. I yeah. just love it. So we happened to go to SEMA this last fall and we were looking at all the cars and of course drawn to this car. Right. And we're lucky enough to meet Norman and he, we started talking to him about it. And then he offered for me to sit in it. And of course I was just beyond thrilled. I didn't know that that was even an option. Right. And, uh, and so, yeah, so you let us sit in it, continue to explain it. And we had actually recently done a video from our friends that have this collection on the P1028, one of the original GT40s. And so we we're, you know, already excited about GT40s in general, but anyway, so we sat in the car at SEMA. We talked about it a lot after we went home and then, um, and we became friends at that point. And right. so Mark then reached out to Norman about the GT40s and what that entails and you know how many build dates do you have and all of that and then I'll let you kind of explain that yeah, process yeah, uh, I, so you, well like Catherine mentioned you, we met at SEMA spent a couple minutes filming some stuff quick um, heard from these guys a couple months later and they were like <laughs> hey just curious you know what's the what's the build slot availability like and at that point I was like well actually it used to be a year but I had a guy drop out uh, we've got one available coming up in a couple months, uh, yada, yada. Mark goes, all right, I'll get back to you. Here I am thinking, okay, you know, that was really pushy. That's a lot. I don't know if anybody's going to do that. <laughs> I think 22 minutes later, Mark <laughs> called me back and said, yeah, let's do it. Let's go ahead. So we, uh, we locked in um, your car coming up this year. It is end of January 24 right now. Your car is going into production beginning of April of this year. So. Mm -hmm. How exciting is that? And uh, unless you wanted to break the news, I will say that you guys are building this exact car. <laughs> um, you're going to go a little different on the power plant. A couple options are different. Power plant, great choice. Setup, great choice. Powder blue with orange stripe, great choice. So um, excited. All the stickers, we all, love that. Yep, that gives all it the that stickers. original look. Yep. Yep. We did go with a fuel injected motor because we live at altitude, so we didn't want to go with a carbureted yep. um, option just because we thought that'd be a little safer bet. Right. But. Yeah, Roush 427 IR, um, 560 horsepower out of the box. <laughs> fuel injected, eight stack. It's going to look like these original Weber carburetors with the eight stack fuel injectors. Great, great motor. And our exhaust, we, we also decided to go with exhaust. It's going to give it a ton of... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to say the least, I think your neighbors are going to absolutely hate you. <laughs> but I think it's worth every bit of it because you guys are going to go full custom headers with uh, what's called a megaphone exhaust. In layman's terms, you guys have a straight pipe Roush 427 <laughs> IR coming out of the back of a GT40. Um, if they don't hate you, they will love you. That's all I can say about the neighbors. <laughs> they may hate us until we offer to give them a ride, and then they will love us. Well, they no, may no hate doubt. us. They may hate you until they see the car, and then they're probably going to be drooling. So <laughs> that's uh, that's how it's going to go. Um, you guys have chassis number P2525. Everything on this car essentially is what you guys are going with, except for you'll have dual fuel fill caps. You won't have this bug flap. Um, you're going to have the, the flat pins as opposed to the, the tongued ones like that. Um, you'll have the normal door handles as opposed to the tool room handles, but you'll have the orange painted 
wheels. You're gonna run the Avons. Avon tires, the best tire to run on these, and I'll dig into that in a little bit. Um, and yeah, the sixes and the roundels, you guys have the race sticker, sticker package that you ordered, right? Yeah, so yeah. you're actually gonna have even more decal here. Okay. Coney suspension, all the other sponsors of the original car. Um, man, is it gonna be cool. And I'm so excited to get it here. It should be finished, you know, very quickly. We, you know, we kind of allocated all that stuff pretty fast. I think the stars aligned on every planet for this build, so. Yeah, we were so fortunate. And again, you've been fantastic. Everything just fell into line and we're able to kind of move it along. I mean, way, yeah. way, way sooner than we anticipated. I mean, we, we just can't wait. Yeah, well, if you called me a week later, you would have been out into 2025 oh um, for gosh. a build slot. And the transaxle we decided to go with, um, the five speed, that would have been about a year wait. Wow. And then the Roush 427, depending on availability, could have been anywhere from, you know, four to 12 months, I guess. It depends on what's what's oh ready to gosh. rock. Yeah. So we got an earlier build slot for you, almost immediate build slot. We had a Quave transaxle allocated for you. Well, for another customer who was gracious enough to say, hey, my car's not gonna be here for a couple more years. They can have it, I'll order a new one. Oh, I, I and mean, then the Roush, yeah. the Roush engine was sitting on the crate, on the rack, last one allocated <laughs> for you guys. I mean, it, it is, I've never seen something happen better. <laughs> I, it's, it's just, I think it was meant to be. Oh. You guys struck while the iron was hot per se, and it, it worked out great. So excited to do it. Um, you guys are gonna have Michael Dosher of Last Stand Performance do your install for you out of South Florida. Um, absolutely amazing shop, really talented builder and installer. So I think you guys are gonna be more than happy with that oh, setup yeah. there. Yeah, we just can't wait. enjoyed i'm super excited to get your car going for Thank you guys you it's again. gonna be unlike anything couldn't be more happy that you guys have the time to stop by thanks for coming oh. and checking out our super cool facility Absolutely. Um, we really love what we do so we love being able to share it with people and and have fun, as mm -hmm. you can see all the burnout marks pulling up in the parking lot here. So. Well, thank you for taking your whole day to give us this experience. I yeah. mean, it's honestly been so incredible. And uh, yeah, just can't thank you yeah, enough. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Anytime. You guys are always welcome. Thank you. We may get lost. You know, I'm out of the Florida oh, dealership, no, no, no. and I have no idea where I am right now in beautiful Southern California. So if I turn right four times, we might end up back in the same place. We might not.